All right, we uh, have been in Hebrews. I'd like to start there again today. Uh, ready for the deep dive, as they say. Uh, grab your coffee, buckle your seat belts, and uh, we'll go from there. <coughs> Thank you, Father, for bringing us together this morning to gather around your word, to learn from your word, and to realize that you have called us before time began for something far greater than what we can possibly imagine. And as we waken up to that, may the light and glory and beauty that is who you are, be worshipped and adored as we live out our calling in you for your purposes. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Hebrews chapter 1. Again, in the past, God, theos, theos, we get the word theology from it, spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, that's it, last days. Very important. Last days of an era, or as Jesus would say, the end of the age. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Aeon is the Greek word. He uses it in uh, Matthew. We are in last days. He has spoken to us by his huias in the Greek or son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. Words that we've heard. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. And then he goes into a um, long discourse regarding the son as compared to angels and ends that chapter with, are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? And that's how he ends that chapter. There's not a, when the author wrote it, there wasn't chapters, but that's how this chapter ends. A whole number of verses comparing son to angels. And it beckons then with regards to creation, as he said, he made the universe. So let's go to Genesis. We've been there. I'll make sure that my spelling is right. Let's 
Nah, I'm not going to do this to me. <clears throat> there is a word in Hebrew called Elohim. It's spelled differently. Um, I don't have my my phone. There's different variations because it's a Hebrew word. But um, Elohim is the word that's used. The very first verse. In the beginning, God created the heavens. Now, Elohim um, is used all through the first chapter. Are you looking that up? Good for you. Thank you. Let's see if I spelled it right, because there's various spellings. Um, if you have, do you have an app that you're using? Okay. The Blue Letter Bible app is a fantastic app if you want to download it later. Um, Elohim is the Hebrew word. El is another name for God. So when you he see a Hebrew word like a town, Beth El, Beth means, do you know? Bread, bread. Bethel is the bread of God. Bethlehem is the house of bread. Daniel, last two, word, last two uh, letters of Daniel, E-L, God, means God is my judge. Michael is God is my strength, I believe. Ezekiel are, are various words on this before they were very used in the NBA. A lot of players named Isaiah and Jeremiah. Ezekiel. Not Ezekiel anymore. They used to be. Anyway. Elohim can be singular or plural. And the only way that you're going to know that is to look at the sentence. I'll give you an example in, in English. Sheep. <laughs> One or many. You're not going to know by looking at the word. You have to look at the word, especially as it's used, say, with a verb. If the verb says, put an article in front of it, you still don't know if it's singular, singular, or plural. But if you do this, are, now you know that the word is plural. Because if it was one, it would be is. The sheep is running away. All right, I know it's just one. The sheep are running away. Many, more than one. More than two, by the way. It's, it's hard because when you talk about, say, the word all. All, the word all infers three or more. So, for example, you can say, oh, at Thanksgiving, all my parents showed up. But if your parents got divorced and remarried and there was more than two, all my parents showed up. Then it makes sense. You with me so far? Okay. That's how Elohim is. <coughs> Did I spell it right? No E? I'll go with that translation for now. Sometimes it's a Y, but okay. So Elohim, in the beginning, Elohim created the, the, the heavens and the earth. Both. The heavens, the, which is now unseen, and the earth, which is now seen. But in this case, both. Scripture will say uh, regarding Jesus' ministry that he is, I believe, in Ephesians, that Jesus is bringing all things in heaven and earth together. So I want us to bear in mind that in Genesis chapter 1, there's no separation. No one has been kicked out of anything. No angel has, is guarding the tree. 
there is unification. Spiritual beings and 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 human beings inter- not interact, but could could sense each other. Human beings could see God. Oh, I heard God coming, and I hid from you because I was afraid. So, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth in the creed that we have that I really think we should keep one of the lines in. God cre- I believe in God the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth of all things seen and unseen. If you don't get that, then we're going to miss a real big part of the 66 books. <laughs> Because you'll find angels everywhere. And unseen spiritual beings everywhere. So, in the beginning, God, Elohim, created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw, and, 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 and you go on. Then you get to 126, where it goes plural. Then God said, let us make human beings, mine is man, human beings, in our. That's definitely plural. Definitely plural. In our image, in our, again, plural, likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea the birds of the air over the livestock over all the earth over all the creatures that move along the ground so there there you have it that was the original <coughs> uh, intention purpose was for human beings in the physical world to be God's image bearers, very much resembling the unseen, well, now unseen world of the spirit world, which also were created beings with the same intention. So God created, etc. Okay, God bless them. Then you get to chapter 2. Chapter 2. So you can see how this can be one spiritual being or two. You'll see throughout all the Old Testament, the gods of this, the gods of that, the gods of that. And it will use this word. It will use Elohim. Won't use a different word. There's only one word in Greek, and that's theos. That's it. But there are many words in Hebrew that we translate as God. El meaning one of them, Elohim. El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Shaddai. What's that? Yahweh is a specific name. Name. We'll get to that in a second. But with regards to gods, you've got El Shaddai, you've got um, the Lord is my provider, which is El something. But they use this. What Je- Jehovah Jai- Jehovah is his, is his name given to Moses. We'll get to that in just a second. Well, we'll get to it right now. <laughs> Chapter 2, verse 4. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. When the Lord God, now what you have is, and, and, and this is important, capital, all capital letters refers to Jehovah, Yahweh, it's the same, the same name. This is the name uh, that God revealed to Moses. So if you remember, Moses sees the the, the burning bush. Hmm, this is interesting. 
and they have a, he has a discussion with the entity, if you will. And uh, I want you to go, Moses, and I'm choosing a people for myself, my, my people. Um, and I want you to be my spokesman. And I want, they're going to come worship me. Remember, I, Moses was, did not originally go down to Egypt to set the people free from slavery. He went down to say, they, they are allowed to worship me. Eventually, they were set free. But that wasn't the original command. The command was to, to set them free to worship. So, of course, Moses is, well, I don't, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look like an idiot. I'm going to go down there, and I'm going to say, yeah, I was watching my sheep, plural, if you want to know. And, uh, well, I, I saw a flame. And he tells a whole story, and Pharaoh's going to be like, so you got to give me a name, something. My name is, I am that I am, which is not I am who I am. Talked about that previously. It's a different. I am that I am infers that God, this God, is not dependent on any other person or circumstance or anything for his existence. He is the creator. All the other Elohim are created. As we go into this, we're going to be looking at, um, well, observing, if you will, celebrating, in our case, Christmas. Where, you know, oh, look, there's this nice little angel. No, no, no you're missing the magnitude of what's happening. And the host of the Elohim appeared. Now, in Greek, they, we're reading Greek, so they don't have a Hebrew word that says Elohim. The only word they have is angels. So that's what they use. A host of heavenly, I think it's angels. What did it say, Bob? What, you, you've got to memorize in the King James. Heavenly host singing Alleluia. I think... The new, and I like that better because heavenly host refers to the Elohim. Um, let me just look that up. See how they translate it here. Um, this is Luke. By the way, this is going to sit with you for a while. It's not going to, this is something that uh, takes a while to, to, to get down. So, uh, the birth of John the Baptist, okay, birth of Jesus, birth of Jesus in those days, okay. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. Again, you only have one word in, in, um, in, in Greek, angelos. We named it a beautiful, at one time, beautiful city, Los Angelos, okay which means the angels. But that's the only word. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said, be afraid, I bring you good news, etc., etc." Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts. Man, let that sit. The heavenly host of the Elohim appeared. What is God doing? All right, let's continue with Genesis. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and no shrub of the field had yet appeared. Now the Lord God, we said, this is his name. He will be referred to throughout the Old Testament as Lord of Lords and God of Gods, and that phrase, God of gods, is Elohim de Elohim. I am the God over all the gods. Uh, 
And when we think of this realm of the Elohim, it is the unseen spiritual created order that is, well, th there is a seen physical order here. We are on the top of that order. We are to administer God's blessing, God's favor, God's administration, God's grace over all of creation on his behalf. That's the order. His kingdom. Same thing in the heavenly or unseen realm of the Elohim. So, let's, uh, before we get to, to, to chapter 3, um, Okay. So in chapter 2, there's, let's go back one more time. So now the Lord God, this is chapter 2 of Genesis, verse 8. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees growing out of the ground. So this is the area, if you will, in the world that God established to dwell with human beings. In Genesis 1, you are to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. We're going to start right here. Eden. Paradise. Utopia is a word. That, that inclination that human beings have to create a perfect society comes from this. The inclination that people have to create a, perf a, a perfect society without any interference from God comes from the Tower of Babel, which is what we're living in. If we could just pass this law, we'll be perfect. Just put this committee, this bureaucracy in charge of everything, and all will be fine. That's a Tower of Babel uh, inclination. It's God's creation, not ours. Only he can fix it. It's broken. But we start in Eden. And this is not only where human beings dwell, but God. God walks among the, well, chapter 3, after they've eaten it, the man, this is chapter 3, verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. What a wonderful phrase. Because the physical and the spiritual were not separated. It was literally, you know, among them. God among them. When we come into Christmas time, and his name will be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. Again. So the Garden of Eden, and, and it's hard for us because we don't live in that world. If we lived in the world, we'd see the various angels that were hanging out with us right now. And given the circumstances of this world, we see the different demons. But they usually come out at night, or they're usually active at night, which is why nothing good happens after what? Well, after, what, after I go to bed. Right. But um, that's where crime takes place, most crime, most violence. There's a reason for that. There's a spiritual reason for that. Jesus uses this, this, this reality in, in um, the Gospel of John all the time. You're children of darkness. I'm child, you believe in me, you become a child of light. Believe in me so you may become children of the light. Okay. So there's the garden, and God dwells in the garden. 
And in Revelation, he once again, he will again dwell in the garden. So, um, this is the dwelling place of God. Later, that dwelling place also resembles a mountain. Mount Zion, Mount um, Sinai is the most prevalent. But it's where God dwells with us in this world. The end of chapter 3, <clears throat> removed from the garden, and now we're in a pickle. Because <laughs> we got a lot of work to do now. There used to be lush, just lush places of paradise by the word the word paradise means a lush garden um that's that's what the word means it, it doesn't mean utopia that's a later word but and so you can see that it's lush a river watering the garden flowed from eden from there it was separated of four headwaters this river and this river and this river is is lush you see this play out in 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 um uh revelation a river flowed out of Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. It's the same thing or same circumstance. So they're removed and that's the end of chapter 3. Flaming, a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Can't get back in. And now there's this separation that begins to take place. It's not immediate. This is a process. So, for example, when God says to Adam, "If you once you eat of this tree, you're going to die. Don't do it. Well, he does eat of the tree. So does Eve. And they live for hundreds more years. But the process of death has now entered into their being, which you and I experience. Thank you so much. Decay. So it's the process, and the process of separation begins. Eventually, the first generation that could see God became more and more dull, and further generations have no knowledge. And then at some point in time, they began to call on the name of the Lord. They couldn't see him anywhere around. Now, this is chapter 3. <clears throat> But while we, as human beings, with a nature now, physically, mentally, spiritually set in rebellion to God, we took on the very nature of some of the Elohim that rebelled against God. Primarily being, um, well, the serpent is one. But the serpent, if you, if you uh, remember in Genesis 3, the serpent is not labeled Satan. It's labeled a serpent, but <laughs> um, it is not uncommon for the spiritual realm to enter the physical realm and from time to time speak through created animals. Um, the story of Balaam and um, the, 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 the person that was going to put a, a curse on Israel the king of, I think it was Balak, or Balak. And Balaam was sent to put the curse on. He's riding on a donkey. And the donkey's talking to him. Now you can just say, oh, isn't that nice? Let's just put up a little. No, this is the reality. You want to know what? There is a reason why every single pagan nation has created idols that, well, let's put it this way. When Israel left for the first time um, Egypt, seeing that the army was destroyed, seeing that the plagues that had come on Egypt had taken place to help spur their, their liberation, they get down to Mount Sinai. Now, before God makes a covenant, you have to remember, Think of it chronologically. Moses go, 
God descends to be with Moses. The spiritual is breaking into the physical again on Mount Sinai. The Israelites are terrified of it. I, I, we, we'll die. So you go up there, and he goes up there, meets with God, and God gives him this Yahweh. Yahweh. Remember, this is very important. This is Yahweh coming into this world. The creator of the world coming into this world, the ultimate spiritual being, because God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. But there are other spiritual beings that aren't the creator and source of everything. So Yahweh breaks in through Moses. I'm the only one. I'm choosing this group to, for my own. This is my own in this world. Other nations I have allowed to go under the influence of various Elohim that are in rebellion against me. Egypt is one of them. But look at Egypt's gods. They, most of them speak through animals. <sighs> I don't really see, yeah, they do, they don't. What, what's meant by that is, with regards to idolatry, and this was something that Israel was ex very clearly given the mandate not to do. Do not make for yourself any idol. Ironically, in the Lutheran church, we got rid of that one. Want to be Catholics. But I think we should put it in. I, just a good idea from my standpoint. Don't, so here's the 10. I am the Lord. I am Yahweh, Jehovah. I, this is my name. I am the Lord, your Elohim, your God. You are to have no other Elohim before me. Oh. Oh. Not the first time. Abraham came out of Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia had Elohim running all over different um, areas. So if you remember, there was a, a point in time where Abraham said, you know, I'm going to bury these gods. I'm not going to worship these anymore. But the point of the idol was that you make it with your hand, whether it's stone, whether it's wood, whatever. You make it, and it's just a dead piece of wood, dead stone. Until you invoke your God or invoke whatever God you created this for. And then that God dwelt within this idol. So there would be a ver various ceremonies to dedicate idols. And you see this play out with regards to Aaron making a calf. He doesn't just say, oh, I made a calf and... There's a ritual that goes with it. There is an invocation that, 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 that the spirit God of whatever come in and dwell among us. And you see this play out in the, the, the time in which Israel was in their promised land and the tabernacle was on a cart and because they, they didn't, they didn't, <laughs> they didn't uh, seek God's wisdom. And so now the tabernacle, tabernacle, remember what God said, you don't make an image for me. So I'll dwell with you. I'll meet with you at the tabernacle, but I'm not to be an image there. You've got two, what is on the each end? Elohim. Cherubim. We call it cherubim. Cherubim, seraphim. There's different words for, for these things. Messenger is angel. That's the most common, giving messages. But they do more than that. They protect. They guard, they fight, they direct, they do whatever. They are ministering spirits sent to help us as their intention was from the beginning. When they're in rebellion, 
They're not trying to help us. And if you want to know where they are, they're on. They're all over the place in Rancho. There's a psychic place over there, and there's um, different. They're all over. We just, ha, 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 isn't that cute? No, it's demonic. But if you don't believe in that stuff anymore, let it go on. So they come out. Is Aaron makes the calf. Hasn't the covenant hasn't been ratified yet, and God sees what sounds like they're already going. Like, that they just came out of the land. I haven't given them yet the instruction not to do that. But are you that stupid? This isn't your God. This is an Egyptian God. What in the Sam heck are you doing? Or my dad used to say Sam Hill. Later on, I found out that was a real thing. There was a Sam Hill. I, who knew? There was a generation that didn't swear as much as our generation. So they had to come up with different things. You know, what in the Sam Hill are you doing? I look at my brother. Did he say just Sam Hell? No, I don't think so. What? Anyway, we better do something that we're not doing. Anyway, we're putting aside discipline techniques of Minnesota culture in the 60s. What are you doing worshiping this, this Elohim? They knew they weren't worshiping a cow. You still have cow worship in, in, in various parts of the world. They know that the cow isn't sacred. But the, the spirit that dwells in the cow is. Which is why when Israel was in their place of rebellion and they had, let's say, a, a, uh, a time of a renewal, they'd smash all the idols. They'd just smash them. But that didn't mean that the demon behind it was killed. It's just it didn't have a way in here as a as a as a relationship of worship. Because even though the idol was smashed, the demon wasn't destroyed. So you just make another one, invoke it, and it comes back. And this is the history of Israel. So you have now, as we're going through this history, Israel that God chose. God gave the nations. You see pieces of this. Um, let's just take a moment, just, just a, a brief moment, to, to, to Psalm um, 82. Kind of gives a glimpse of it to, to an extent. Psalm 82, God presides in the great assembly, the Elohim. In fact, um, I don't have my, I want to give a direct, uh, I had a phone, what I do with my phone, I want to give a direct breakdown and I apologize for... Talk amongst yourself just briefly. Okay, Psalm. Psalm 82. Let me break this down. Here we go. 
Uh, use my concordance to make sure. A psalm of Asaph. God, Elohim, standeth in the congregation of the mighty. El. Not Elohim, El. Elohim standeth in the council of the El and among the gods, Elohim, he judges. How long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the cause of the weak and fatherless, maintain the rights of the poor and oppressed, rescue the weak and needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They know nothing, they understand nothing, they walk about in darkness, all the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are, what does your translation say? Gods, Elohim, you are all sons. Ben is, is the Hebrew word for son. So when you get um, oh Benjamin, son of my affliction, I think it is. No, son of my right hand. A movie, Ben-Hur. What is that? Yamin? Yeah, okay. My right. So Ben Yamin. Yeah, okay. Benjamin is my right. Son of my right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you a direct translation of this. Uh, this is uh, verse 6. By the way, Jesus quotes this uh, verse himself. Okay. I have said, you are God's Elohim and children, Ben of the Most High. Elion, which is A-E-L-Y-O-N. This is the Most High God. Most High Elohim. That's Yahweh. Yahweh is spirit. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And he is the Elion, the God of everything unseen as well as seen. So all these things that you worship that are unseen, that aren't me, are actually demons. They're not, uh, they're not me. When you read some of the prophets and they go, oh, and I fell before him. He said, no, don't worship me. I'm just a, no, 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 worship me. I'm just a messenger. Do not do that. The demonics say, oh, yeah, worship me. That was the whole point, not the whole point. That was the voice that came through the serpent to Jesus. Worship me. See all this? It's mine. What's the Lord's portion in this world? Israel and Israel's land. That's what I have appointed for mine. Everything else has been distributed, if you will. And, and, and the Lord gave them over, Paul writes this in, 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 in Romans, to the, the various sin and, 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 and acts of sin and and you have various demons over various areas. For example, the the prince of Persia, when you read the gospel, or uh, the, the, the prophet Daniel. Daniel goes into a fast for three weeks because he's seeking wisdom. Finally, the angel shows up and says, I would have been earlier, but I had to go through this jerk that's all over Persia. All this stuff starts to make sense only if you understand the dynamics that are in play throughout the entire Old Testament. Um, so, so now, and you, this is going to have to sink in because I can. You're used to seeing postcards with human beings with wings, and that's about the extent of it. But there's a far greater thing that's taking place. Okay. So now let's go back to Hebrews for 
last remaining moments. The Elohim, plural, by the way, they can't, they can't make life. They can't, they're not the author of life. They're just a being. They can't bring life into existence. And Jesus talks about this uh, with his relationship with the Father. Just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Just as, well, we're, we're, there's way too much. We'd be here for five hours. Going back to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5. For to which of the angels, thinking this Elohim, did God ever say, you are my son, today I have become your father? Well, who is he talking? He's talking in Psalm 2. He's talking to David. So the authority is given to human beings over, over the Elohim. We, as Paul says, are to judge angels. And that word for judge is not like we have it with regards to a, a legal system, more of a ruler. We are to rule angels, not them, us. That's how it will be set up. It's set up that way with Jesus. If I wanted, I could command, and I have a whole army of angels that would come and stop this, this but it's not meant to be. This is, this is something that the whole universe hinges on right here, which is why Christmas, although his birth is up for discussion, just the fact that the word, the unseen part of this domain, not only took on human form, but because angels can take on human form. You see this happen with Abraham. God talks among themselves. Should we tell Abraham what we're going to do? I don't know. I don't know if it's a good idea. Well, yeah, we should probably tell Abraham. They're having this discussion. But they're in human form. A Abraham doesn't know that they're angels and take a human form. That's different than tabernacling among us by becoming one of us. Jesus did not take on human form. He became human. He, in his birth, took this division between Elohim and the world and said, I am leaving and, and coming and coming into human form. I am going to tabernacle with them. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Or the actual Greek, the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. But we couldn't recognize him because all we can see is physical. Though he was in the world, the world, and the world was made through him, the world didn't recognize him. How could you? We can't recognize anything spiritual. But for those who did receive him, he gave them the right to become children of God, Yahweh. Not just an angel or one of these spiritual beings, but Yahweh, the Lord, the creator God. The God of God, the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, etc. This is how big it is for those that can see it. And all of his life, he's demonstrating this, casting out demons. When was the last time the church cast out demons? Oh, we don't do that because we're too busy doing what again? So recapturing this, understanding this in its, in it, in its context is very important because of what we're involved in. I tell you the truth. Well, I'll give you one last example, then we'll call it there. Talking about being able to see and not being able to see, et cetera. Let's go to the Gospel of John. I apologize, we're not going to stay in one or two. Annie, we're going to go down <laughs> over to um, 
Um, no, I love Jira. Um, let's go to chapter 14. Chapter 14. Um, yeah. So, so, okay. Um, I'll just, he tells his, his, his disciples he's leaving. And they're they're very upset. Back in chapter thirteen of verse thirty one, he says, "When he was gone, uh, this is this is uh, Judas." Jesus said, "Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in Him. If God is glorified in Him, God will glorify the Son in Himself, and will glorify Him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I'm going, you can't come." And this is very startling. You have this discourse between Peter and, and Jesus. And then chapter 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, or you trust in God. Either It depends on how you want to translate the inflection of that sentence. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my father's house, oikos in the Greek, they make a good yogurt. Now, if you're into yogurt, Eat oikos yogurt. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And they're like, what? Because he's going here place of the dead, our, our creeds will say, uh, crucified under Pontius Pilate, uh, dead and buried, he descended into the dead. It used to be he descended into hell. We didn't change that. He descended into the dead. The third day he rose again, came back, different form, resurrected form. But in this case, Thomas says, you know, Lord, we don't know where you're going, um, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, if you really knew where I came from and knew me for who I am, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. You're staring right at Jesus and going, "I uh, what? Just clueless. So Philip says, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. But because you can't see anything spiritual, you can't see it within me. So he goes on to say, how can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I'm in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it's the Father living in me. It's Yahweh, if you will, the God of Genesis 1, dwelling in him and working, living in him. And every word that Jesus says is from God himself, which is why when you meditate on the word of God, it changes you. It breathes life into you. Your physical body, your mental, your, your limited spiritual or your limited mind will not even pick up on any of it until it's time. And you go, whoop. And a scripture will come to mind. Ever have that happen? Just, that's not you. That's God in you. This is how it works. All right. Um, I'm going to stop there. That's a lot to think about. A lot to think about. Which is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
No. No, the demonic does not know what you think. They're just entity, and I don't, you know, I don't want to get in off the uh, in, into the weeds too deep. Let's think of human beings without bodies. I don't know what you think. God knows what I think, and God knows what you think, but I don't know what you think. I don't know what my dog, well, I know what my dog thinks. Yeah, my dog's really easy to read. Yeah. All right, you want a tree? Here's a tree. <gasps> Goes and sits down or whatever. It's not that complicated. My dog's not, yeah, I wonder how I could kick off the old man and take over his house. It's not that manipulative, you know. That's a cat, yeah. That's, that's my, <laughs> that's right. Oh, you're home. Yeah, I could, I could get along just fine without you. Maybe couldn't open up the cat food, but other than that, you're really not worth much. Sentient beings. So this is important. Um, we'll continue this because a resurrected body is different than what you and I have. But it's what you and I are destined for. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's why if you know this stuff, you never grow old. Because the giddiness of God, the, the, the excitement of it, the joy of it, the power of it, the beauty of it, the, you realize who you are. And God, as Paul says, you're dead. But your life is hidden with Christ in God. And who you are, you have not yet known it. But, or in 1 Corinthians 13, all we can see now is, is just, just like in a really, really bad AM, PM bathroom mirror. That's how I look at it. Because there's really nice mirrors now, but back then it's like, we can just see just. But then we shall know fully, even as we are fully known. That's. Yeah, who wouldn't give your life for that? If you really knew it, believe me. All right. Thank you, Father, for your word. <clears throat> As we go into your word and continue to go into your word, seek your kingdom, seek your voice and your truth. May you be praised and glorified and honored and worshiped and adored in all that we say and think and do. All for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a great week.